Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna do another fun painting. So let's get started. Now we'll just take our two inch brush right through a little bit of, oh, maybe both of our yellows, about equal amounts, and a tiniest speck of red, very little paint on the brush. And right here, I'm gonna drop in some light. Wipe the brush out on a paper towel and continue. You wipe it so that you'll have less paint on there and you can, you can have a softer color. There. Scrub that paint around on the canvas. Really make it blend. That's about all it takes right there. Maybe you want a lot, maybe we want a lot of it down here as well. Just to, I don't know, just have some color. There. Here's some red, some black, some blue, and some of our white and yellow. Okay. So now I've got my filbert brush and I've loaded it flat like this. Allow some of that softness to show through. See that the original color we had there? Leave that softness. And I'm flicking my brush. There's no tapping. Tapping would be too harsh. I'm gonna take some titanium white and find a clean spot to work, maybe right here on the palette. Tiniest touch of cad yellow, yellow ochre. And put them right in there. I think we need a little more yellow. Cad yellow, because the cad yellow is a little brighter. Okay, that's about right. Just enough to tint the white. Start here. Sweep left and right. Can I get that working? and then press down, drag across firmly, firmly, straight as possible and it just look at that. And okay, so we did pick up some color, wipe it out on the paper towel, reload it. And isn't this amazing? It's almost as if the paint is dry. There's so little on there. Almost as if it's completely dry. So I've got my filbert brush and the same kind of similar, very, very gray mix of, oh, here's some red, yellow ochre, white, touch of blue. Makes just a nice, similar rock color to what we had going in the very far background. And maybe over here somewhere, we want to have a couple of rocks like this. And I'm just, again, maybe I got the, I got both sides loaded this time, but I'm just, because I'm making bigger rocks, but I'm just uh, running this color back pretty loose like this, making intricate details and such. The lay of the land is very interesting. You see this huge slope we have going on. Maybe some some cliffs. Watch this, we can make those look like cliffs by adding some white to the, to the color. A bit of white and a bit of yellow. Both yellows, yellow ochre and cad yellow. Watch this. So you can make a couple of drop downs. Like the light's kind of catching those. Let's go ahead and paint in an evergreen. Black, brown, red, this is just the trunk color. Another evergreen, this is an evergreen as well, but maybe this one's smaller. Starts right here, and uh oh, it's bent. <laughs> right there. Okay, tiny little guy. We'll worry about him later. I just wanna put him in so you know where he is. Okay, maybe we want a red one. I'm gonna have to squeeze out more paint pretty soon. Take some red and yellow ochre on the dirty brush. And a little bit of white to lighten it. Just a little. White. There we go, see if this works. There we go. And I have my brush flat just so it layers the paint on instead of cutting through the canvas. And I'm gonna just scrub to get, and changing the angles of my hand to get this background tree.
change if you want to, depending on what's easiest in a certain area. It's a little too tall to be doing that. There. Here's some red and white. Red and white, yellow, both yellows. Red and white and a little bit of both yellows. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Watch this. I'm just gonna, so I got the corner of the brush. I'm just gonna dab and dot with the corner of the brush to get suggestion of leaves and things out here on this tree. This is the way I get more detailed trees. You don't have to just tap them in. With a filbert, you can sort of smudge. See, I get that wrist kind of shaking there. This is a little bit more tedious, but that's okay. I'm not concerned so much about that. If it takes a little more time, but it looks a lot better, then you should do it. Unless, of course, you have a, a reason why you can't take a lot of time. Sometimes that happens for me. And I adjust my techniques. So if I've got something, you know, that's, that needs to be done. Like a like a teaching, painting, or something like that, then of course I change the techniques a little bit to accommodate the time. But for now, I got all the time that I want to take on this painting. Because that's the point. I want to show you how to do the detailed ones. Next, I'll load up our three-quarter flat with a bit of black and red. And before we go too far in this painting, I want to, I'm going to show you where we're, we want our big evergreen. Maybe I'll start here at the bottom. This one in my mind is kind of sloping in. It's got a big old root that sticks out. We can map him in darker later. I'm just, just blocking him in for now, kind of showing you where he's going to be. And this won't affect our highlights. You know, we can highlight around the tree. There he goes, right over the light. It's not nearly dark enough. But there we go, that's where he's gonna be. And I see I got this nice little S curve going on him. Very subtle, but there's a bit of a curve. Just a bit. Kinda just a little curvy. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe it doesn't really show up. I don't, I don't care too much. I'm not concerned. And let's work in some of this area. Very, very, very little paint underneath. That's the only reason why this works. So, like I said before, if you're not able to paint, if you're not having any luck here, working with wet oils, you must concentrate on how little you have down because it's honestly, sometimes it feels like I'm painting on a dry canvas because that's how little paint there is. I remember recently I was painting a sky in a demonstration and and somebody was asking me about the amount of paint. And I had my clouds in my sky and I was pretty much finished. And I took my finger and I, and I, this is probably a little wet here, but I slid it right across the whole painting in the sky area and nothing came off. Nothing came off the canvas. It was just, I had a little bit of blue on my finger, but the clouds were not ruined. Because I was so, so sparing with my paint. So I've got my three quarter inch brush and I'm going to wipe it out on the paper towel so that it's reasonably clean. And as you can see, I'm enjoying using this three quarter inch brush today. It's good for details. So I'm going to load it up with some sap green, black, blue, and some yellow just so it's not pure black, dark. There we go. You probably can't tell that there's yellow in it, but that's okay. And I'm going to be very, very careful. And I'm going to just quickly drop in a bit of highlight, or not highlight at all, a bit of this color to create some leaves. I'm careful because I don't want, I don't want to pick up this background. Now this is very, there, a little bit on the thick side up here, so be careful. Use only the corner of the brush to create tiny leaves, and then when you go in the center, you can use more of the brush. Always constantly reloading so that you're not, you're not causing any problems with the paint. Nice and dark, just like we want it to be.
Oh yeah, look at this, a little light, a little dark over the light. Look how effective that can be. And in my mind, this is a little evergreen or something. One of the final things I like to do is drop in beautiful detailed limbs and such, just like this. Take your time. Here you'll find that certain areas of the painting are easier to, to do limbs in. The thicker the paint is, well, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? The thicker the paint is, the more difficult it is to layer even the thin paint over. This is the first time we've thinned any color since the very beginning when we put down our base coat. Isn't that amazing? There's just no need to. Because you know, if you thin it, oh, is it tough to paint over. There. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.